In studio with me right now, Texas Railroad Commissioner Ryan Sitton. Welcome back to the show. Thanks, Chad. It's great to be back with you. Yeah, it's always good to have you, uh, one, on the show and two, in, in studio. And uh, you're back here in Lubbock. Uh, what are you doing uh, here in West Texas today? The big stop we have today is we're going to Texas Tech. I am doing a college leadership tour around the state. This is the seventh or eighth uh, campus we've been to and trying to talk not just to Republicans, but to all college kids about what is it like to be a leader and how do you pursue success in your life? Talking about some of the basic things that inspire them to go out and achieve bold futures. What, what kind of response have you been getting from campus to campus? You know, it, funny, Chad, it started off slow, but it's building a lot of momentum. And, uh, you know, I'm really working hard to get out of the normal political Dynamic. In fact, I wear a black T-shirt and jeans. Just get casual. And I take questions more than I lecture. I want them to say, hey, Ryan, when you started your company and when you ran for office and when you built this real estate investment, how did that work for you? I want to give them an opportunity to engage. And we're finding a lot of kids coming out who aren't particularly politically active, but say, hey, I, I want to understand what it is you've got to share. Yeah, well, that, that's very cool. So you're going to be over at uh, Texas Tech today? Texas Tech tonight at, uh, I think, 6 o'clock. Yep. And um, yeah, we'll we'll it's open to the public. Okay, well, very cool. Uh, that, that's going to be a great event. How how are things? You know, during the legislative session, uh, the railroad commissioners uh, aren't really talked about. Uh, railroad <laughs> commission not really talked about during the legislative session. That may or may not be a good thing. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what as a, as an agency, what do y'all do during the session? What is the job of the railroad commission? during this point in time during, during this session is a good example chad like most sessions this one's not that different for us from a normal time in other words we're regulating oil and gas we're processing drilling permits we're hearing contested cases we're reviewing issues in industry we're going out doing inspections that doesn't change at all whether the legislature is in session or not we do have to go every session and get a, get our budget approved uh, we have to balance the budget in this state every two years just like most states do and uh, our legislature does a good job of that so we're going to asking for approval and with an oil and gas industry that's growing like crazy like ours is we've got to be both financially responsible make sure we're getting the most out of every dollar at the same time recognize our workload may double in the next couple of years so how do we balance that and that's what we spend most of our time talking to legislature about you know the last time i had you on uh we were talking about the lack of pipelines in texas mm -hmm. and about how that's a need and i visited with one of your colleagues last week uh, Commissioner Craddock about this, and she she said, "Yeah, it's still an issue. H how big of an issue is it, the pipeline issue in this state right now? It's actually bigger now than it ever has been. So it's not getting better. It hasn't been getting better the last couple of years. It's getting worse, but it's getting worse because our production is skyrocketing. In the Permian Basin alone, we're producing close to now four million barrels of crude oil a day. The state of Texas is producing about twenty five billion cubic feet of gas. That is four and." and almost five and, and four times as much oil and gas today as we produced just 12 years ago. It takes a lot of pipelines to move that product. And we got to move that product to market. You got to get it to the refineries. You got to get it to the power plants. You got to get it to overseas. So as, if we want this energy industry to thrive, which is good for every single solitary Texan, we got to have the way to get it to market, which is why pipelines are so crucial. Uh, how, how long does the, the process take? Like, let's say, Company wanted to come in. They they want to do a new pipeline. How long does that process take, and what all goes into it? Yeah, well, for, first of all, they got to site the pipeline, figure out where are they going to route it in the first place. How big is it? They got to get contracts with producers to shore up the financial surety. Then they go out and got to do deals with landowners. They got to source the pipe, actually plan out construction construction plan the project when they go really fast a major pipeline across the state of texas can happen in a couple of years from start to finish but that's pretty quick yeah. normally from original conception all the way through planning development and final operations normally longer than that probably three to four years so so the the with, with the issue now and the lack of pipelines how is that impacting the industry well, right now the biggest impact we see is natural gas prices at the wellhead in the Permian Basin are below zero. In other words, instead of selling natural gas, uh, oil producers are paying people to take their natural gas because the market is inverted. They see it as a waste stream. I got to keep producing my oil and I got to do something with my gas. So you'll hear people paying as much as $2, $3 a, a MMB to you for gas for people to take it away. Now, I think over the next, we already know pipelines are coming that will solve this problem. So in a couple of years, that'll be resolved. But right now, uh, natural gas prices are really getting hit. How's it been working with uh, the, this administration, the Trump administration versus the last administration well it's it's obviously better i mean trump and the federal government are in a in a mode now of not only decreasing regulation but saying to states like texas who obviously know what you're doing we're not going to get in your way and we're also trying to keep 
pieces of our agency from getting in your way and even other states from getting in your way. So, you know, we're there's no question. Texas is the most sophisticated oil and gas state in the world, uh, sophisticated as most countries. And so to have an administration that recognizes that and just let us lets us do what we do. That's a huge blessing. For I, us. Know, I know it's always hard to predict, you know, what what, uh, you know, the you know, the the energy sector will look like you know, in, in the next few years, but best you can tell, uh, you know, looking at what we're looking at here in Texas, how do things look for the state? It couldn't look more positive. I think in another uh, five to 10 years, Chad, people around the world will be talking about Texas in the same conversation, which they already are today is Russia, Saudi Arabia, even the rest of the United States. But I think they'll be talking about us as the key leader in refining transportation pipelines, midstream uh, oil and gas production. We, we are more integrated in this state than any other place in the world. And people recognize it. And our impact on the global market is being felt all around the world. And it will be even more so. And what I, what I love to remind people of is how much every individual tax will benefit from that. And I'm talking about jobs up and down the spectrum from pipe, Blind operators to machinists, even HVAC guys, automotive repair guys who are, who are working on trucks, uh, engineers, architects, geologists. I mean, across the board, the energy industry in this state is changing in a way it has not in a generation. And that opportunity is going to be big for probably a couple of decades. So it's a great time to be in Texas, a great time to be in the oil business. Yeah, I'm visiting with uh, Texas Railroad Commissioner Ryan sitting here on the Chad Hasty Show. Tell folks if they want to keep up with uh, what all you're up to. I know you're crisscrossing the state uh, with, with uh, what you're up to. To also what uh, the Railroad Commission is up to. How can people get all that information? The easiest way is to go to our website, which is just ryansitton.com. And, and Chad, I want to remind people, in 2020, I will be the top state official on the ballot. So you'll have the president, you'll have our congressman, our senator. But in terms of state officials, I'll be the top state official. And as we talk about what the brand of the Texas Republican Party is, I'm working really hard to help set that, that we are the party of opportunity. We're the party of accountability. We're the party that believes in individuals' potential, and we want to unlock that by making sure that we aren't trying to prescribe people's lives through government, through taxation, through policy, through rules. And and I think people in this state believe in that. And so when we talk about the Republican Party of Texas in 2020, you'll hear us talking about that we are the party that believes in people more than we believe in government. So come to our website, ryansitton.com, and find out what we're doing getting ready for the next election. All right, I'll tell you what, next time we get you either here in studio or on the phones, let's talk about how the Republican Party in Texas is doing and, and how we uh, stay. I mean, you've seen the numbers, and, and yep. you saw the numbers in the last midterm election. Let's get into that, uh, about how this state is changing. I'm ready. And what Republicans can do to, to keep Texas red, all right? Let's talk about it. Thanks, Chad. All right, thank you. That's uh, Texas Railroad Commissioner Ryan Sitton here on the Chad Easty Show. We'll take our final break of the hour of the show. We'll be right back.